So the current focus of our research is to determine where the virus is essentially hiding in the patient's body when they're on suppressive therapy. So what cells are actually harboring the virus when patients are taking therapy, even though the therapy does reduce the virus to very low levels in the plasma, we know that it persists in certain cells. So we're really trying to determine which cells harbor the most virus and which cells are most important to be targeted so that we can remove the virus from those cells. And what are the biggest challenges that you're facing with your research? Uh, the largest challenges would be that at times we can't get enough cells from the patients. So even though the patients are very, very generous, um, there is a limit to the number of cells that you can get from patients. So we do have to look at a pretty large patient cohort so that we can make some determination as to where the virus is in these their cells during suppressive therapy. Um, but I have to say that in collaboration with the University of California, San Francisco, they've been very, very generous with their patients, and the patients have been very generous with their cells and samples. So we have been able to do some very in-depth studies with these And patients. why are you so interested in knowing exactly which cells the virus is in? I think it's really important for us to be able to target those cells with certain, um, whether it's an agent that can actually stimulate the, the cells to produce the virus and then the purge the virus from these cells. I think it's also important that if we can't really target those cells, those would be the cells that we should actually measure the virus in for other to see how well are we uh, reducing the reservoir in patients. So I think really identifying the cells where this virus is actually latently um, held, or the reservoir, the cells that the that the res cellular reservoir that's holding the virus during suppressive therapy, is really really key um, in in developing eradication strategies and also following how well eradication strategies are working. And what kind, what role has AMFAR played in your research? AMFAR has been absolutely instrumental in our research. In fact, I began this research in Sweden and the funding for HIV research is very, very low in Sweden. And at one point, I really thought we would just have to stop our program. Even though we had the collaboration built with the University of California, San Francisco, we did not have the funding in Sweden. And then AMFAR gave us a very large ARCH grant and that saved our program. And from that, that funding, I have actually graduated two PhD students. I have a third student who will be finishing up in Sweden. And we've been able to actually transfer this work now to Australia. And I have two soon-to-be PhD students who will be okay, continue on with this work. Without the funding from AMFAR, this work would not have been done. That's great. Um, is it fair to say that ultimately you're interested in finding a cure for HIV? Yes, that is my dream. <laughs> and I hope within my lifetime, and it doesn't have to be me, but I just hope within my lifetime we do come, we do have a cure for so HIV. So how optimistic would you be that we'll find a broadly applicable cure in the next five or ten years? I think within the next ten years, I think we will find a cure. I think I'm, I'm quite certain of that. And I think it's also it's so helpful for the funding from AMFAR, from other um, countries, and the, the Australian government has also been very generous to our group. So with this funding, this will push uh, the agenda forward, I'm, I'm sure of that.